stuff? Yeah, quite a bit. We do a lot of pre-construction. No, but I mean you personally. Um, go, hey, Jeff. Oh yeah, you know, no, I'm quite these. involved. I'm quite involved in the in our office. Mm-hmm. Um, we've, you know, the days of handing a guy a set of drawings, you know, two weeks before the job starts. Those, those aren't. Those are gone. Anymore. I mean, based on all those things we just talked about, all that yeah. pre-construction mm-hmm. and all that stuff that's happened. Yeah, they're, you know. You got to build that plan. You want that plan to work. You better pre pre plan that thing for right? sure. And so, you know, KHSNS among many other competitors, I'm sure you know they have a, a you know, like a, a BIM department, construction design department. We have estimating. We have all these departments that have all their fingers on all this work, mm-hmm. which is part of that pre construction. Sure. And especially when you get into some of this stuff that maybe no one's ever done, you know. Um, heck, I was involved in uh, as a project superintendent. I was involved in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. For three years, is that thirteen right? months before we even put a boot on the ground? I was in Glendale. No shit. That was a great experience working with them. Wow. But I was involved for three years, all duration there. I ended up have the opportunity to go to work in Florida at the at Disney World as well. Oh wow. Yeah, that was a great experience. Um, but if you don't have that pre-construction time, to to set up, you know, your structural engineers. Uh, constructability, value engineering, yeah. and of course, clients and general contractors are hiring, you know, folks like KHSNS to to do maybe even separate pre-construction contracts before they even give us the job. Sure. So there's so pre-construction because it seems like the more advanced we get with all this technology, yeah. like the less we know. It's a trip. And we have you know offices full of college graduates. Nothing wrong with that. Mm-mm. Never put a screw in. No. Never. Don't even know what a screw is, an A right. point or a tech. Never no. put a piece of lath up. Never put a piece of drywall up, right? Yeah, yeah. God bless them, but they they need the training. And it the would help them so much if they did. Yeah. It would make their job easier. Yeah. You know, I really, even if it was for three months. Yeah. You know, see how and heavy you know, this shit is. And we have we have little programs internally where we, we will take some of these interns or some of these really young estimators or or uh, project engineers and let's go let's let's I'm going to show you how to do this today. Mm-hmm. You know these are you know job visits and and mentoring and kind of take them out and show them what we do and how we do it and why we do it. Right? Sure. There's, there's there's always a why, right? So have any of them ever said, "Hey man, I want to get in the field." Yes. Oh, good. Yeah, we've actually had it both ways. We've actually had carpenters that said, you know what, I carpenters, tapers, painters, I've actually had guys, one of one of our really young project managers, John Martinez, he was a taper here four years ago. Mm-hmm. He said, you know, I think I'm done with taping. I want to I want to see what the office is about. And he's he's a great project manager. And um, but he worked in the field and he, he knows he was a taper. He knows he gets it. He mm-hmm. knows what. Uh, you know, he has that edge, I guess, that little yeah. edge of being in the field. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It, it makes a big difference. It yeah, really it really does. does. I couldn't imagine getting into construction and not knowing how to build shit. It would be it would be very, very strange to, uh, but I'm not wired that way either. Right. You know, to I, I would want to know how that stuff, it would be intriguing, you know. And yet we <clears throat> still, I get several phone calls and emails regarding people that want to be sponsored. So there's still this young, these young 18, 19 year old folks coming out of high school that, that something it's either, I just want to be in construction because I want a quick job or something's driving them to the construction. Mm -hmm. Some of them have had zero experience in construction or maybe even never even had a, never been employed before. Sure. And like I mentioned earlier, some of those guys, they rise to the top. Mm Mm-hmm. And some of them don't, but yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of people that are looking to be sponsored. That's good. Yeah, that's that's a good sign. Because, it really is. Yeah, you know, because they they've been shoving this education thing down everybody's throat since they were in preschool. You know, all the the new generations that are coming up in this stuff, and that a lot of those markets are saturated. You know, there's a lot of coders out there, and there's yeah. a, you know, you can't get those jobs. You have to be exceptional to be accepted in right. those scenes you know so you know doctors nurses engineers and scientists and all that yeah you need college for that you need to you know there's a lot of trick math that goes into that stuff but yeah um to have that as that's 
you're going to be a loser if you don't have a degree. That's bullshit. That's rough. I, you know, I don't agree with that. Yeah. You know, you talk to any of these guys that came in when you and I did, you know, maybe they would like to have moved up the ladder higher, but that all comes with your attitude as well. You know, if you're going the extra mile and you're putting up more than the next guy, you're, it's recognized. The, the leadership recognizes that. You're looking for that every day. Yep. You know, you can see that when you're out on the job. You know, you're dealing with your foreman out there, but you still have your eyes open and seeing who's getting what done. I mean, you're like, hey, what is that guy? What is he doing? You know, and then the foreman's like, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know? I noticed the guys that, uh, that don't give me excuses are definitely the ones that, uh, you know, they own it. They own the issue. There's no excuses. They're the ones that are moving up. Mm -hmm. You have, if you have a team of people that have a lot of excuses. Yeah. They're, they're not usually the ones that move forward. No. You know, I think, you know, you and I didn't have excuses that we were back in the day. We were told what to do. Told. Yes. We yelled. We were probably yelled at. Told I was, what to do. Yeah, yeah. There was no talking back. Yeah. You did the work. You did the job as fast as you pro possibly physically could, probably in an unsafe way. Yep. Yep. And the well, next day you tried to go faster and faster the next day yeah. and then faster the next day. Yeah. Yeah. It, you, no, know, you see those people today, they're keepers. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There are some out there. There is. There are some out there. Like well, I said, you know, you see these young guys, you know, yeah. it's inspiring. When I get these folks that want to uh, get sponsored, um, I usually give them, I usually give them a call because I get, I'll get an email of a list or whatever. I'll give them a call and I'll see, I'll just talk to them. And you can usually almost tell as you're talking to them, um, without even seeing them or meeting them, you can tell by their attitude or the way they're speaking with you or, you know, man, boss, I'd like to come in, but you know, I, you know, I don't have gas tomorrow or I, or my car broke down or my goldfish drowned or they're giving you excuses and you haven't even, you're just talking. Sure. Right. Sure. So you get the guy that's like, yeah, I'll take the bus. I'll be there tomorrow. Yeah. You're like, you're what, like, what's the address it. and what time are you starting? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, and those are good days when you see those people coming for sure. Yeah, for sure. And it just, it takes so long to move up the ladder. You know, you, there, there's so many different aspects of our industry, yeah. you know, are you, you, what's happening now? What I notice and I hear from a lot of guys is everybody's a freaking specialist. <laughs> you know, when you came up, you were, you gotta be good at everything in that trade. Right. You don't have to be excellent <clears throat> at it, but you have to be proficient at it so that you can get in. If, if you get onto a job, and he has all these framers going and you really excel in framing, but he says, Hey dude, all I got right now, I got some, I got some board for you to hang, or I've got, uh, I want you to frame in access panels or whatever it is. Be good at it. Right. You know, you're getting paid good money for this. Yeah. And, and you know, if there's an opening in the framing crew and you're excelling at framing and this foreman's never met you before and you're putting up more than, the rest of the crew out there, it's going to get recognized. You know, you'll be framing for the rest of that project. Sure. Or whatever you're good at, you know, but you should be, you should be proficient at everything in the trade, in my opinion, you know, because again, you're making some good money on that stuff. The other thing that I see on a lot of these is, uh, you know, you're really not a journeyman until you got 10 years in the game. Because you've been put in so many different situations and you know how to get out of them and make them look good. You know, you can improvise with the materials. You, you have, uh, you know, a lot of the efficient moves to make to get it done to where you're not, you know, running in circles, chasing your tail. Right. You know, and a lot of these jobs that, you know, you need a guy to throw in the fire cocking. Okay. But not for three fucking years. Right. Okay. And, and we can, we can destroy people like that. Right. Yeah. So they need to be moved around. But now I had one guy tell me, yeah, man, I'm the fire cocking foreman. Well, groovy, man. <laughs> <laughs> you must be really good at that. You know, it's going to get covered up with baseboard, but he felt good about it, but they need to be moved around. And, you know, same with like all this, this panel operations, 
that are going on. So panelization isn't new. I, I was doing it as an apprentice back in the 80s. You know, we were building skins of hotels in these little industrial buildings, you know, and shipping them out and doing all that crap. Learned a lot of stuff on production, you know, how to set up for cuts and repetitious cuts, you know, your stops and so on and so forth. A lot of guys that may be coming into the trade may be put into those panel operations, but they need to be put into the field too. Sure. You know, because there's a yeah. lot of, it's it's a different world. You know, you're right. in a controlled environment in a panel right. situation, right? Right. Like a manufacturing plant. Right. Yeah, you don't get the same um, experience, the same conditions, the same troubleshooting situations, exactly. the same, you know, p probably like the same of, homeschooling versus a kid out in school right sure yeah exactly yeah they got to live and learn and mm -hmm. see what it's like to be out on a job site mm -hmm. and now i think that the panelization because of the cost of construction the labor and the safety issues that you have to deal with out on the job that that's making this excel even further you know to be able to panelize it well do you agree it's all about risk correct it's all about risk, yeah. risk and profit, really. Yeah. If, yeah. I mean, obviously those panels need to be sent to a job site and installed by carpenters more than likely. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's that end of it, but, um, you know, the quicker, the safer, and the more accurate you can build anything, whether that's in the field or in a computerized robotic plant, mm -hmm. um, the better. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that it means profit. Yeah. No one's getting hurt mm -hmm. or less people are getting hurt. You're more controlled. Sure. You don't have cranes and man lifts and scissor lifts and all those things that just seem to, you know, kind of mess up your safety schedule, schedule and protocol. And, yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I would I'd love to see a figure on a on a massive job of how much time was wasted w waiting for a man lift. Yeah, you know, to get materials up and down and so forth. I mean, God, that is especially on these massive projects. You know, the thing would go by; it'd be packed. You know, it'd be forty guys packed in that bloody thing, and there you're waiting for the next round. Yeah, you know, to come through. You know, those staggering numbers that that are you know, and Greg really accentuates all these you know these big numbers as far as how that stuff reproduces itself and just adds up. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of to your point, I I. Uh, I figured out one day on a big hospital that I was running years ago that for the duration of that hospital, I spent $650,000 in safety meetings. Oh, shit. If you add up the people, because it was a very yeah. large job. Sure. I spent $650,000 non-value added 15 minutes at a time. That is unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. It's unbelievable. Was that, that figured somewhere? Was it? No, of course not. <clears throat> You know, it's it's baked into your production. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's only fifteen minutes. Mm -hmm. Wow! And you, and you actually came up with those figures. Well, I started adding them up one day. Mm -hmm. I just started going, okay, this guy's making this much money. He spent fifteen minutes. Mm -hmm. I've got a hundred guys here every Monday for three years. Yeah. Or what, you know, you just start sure. adding up all that stuff. You know, and yeah, and people people don't really realize what stuff costs until you start giving it to them that way. They think it's 15 minutes. Come on, Jeff, 15 minutes. You're being chicken shit, man. Yeah, but right. you start adding up all that stuff yeah. or a guy waiting for the man lift or a guy having to walk down the hall because his board is, you know, two rooms down. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just two rooms. Come on. Right. You didn't get your 40 sheets. Right. Well, what would happen if the board was in the room? Exactly. I might get 60 sheets. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, what would yeah. happen if it was your money? Exactly. That, Absolutely. That that puts a that puts a different spin on it. it certainly when, does when that happens. Yeah. But nobody, you know, this has changed. Like this lean construction. I I don't know how how long people have been talking about this, but it is it's changing the game of of how production gets done on these jobs. It certainly and, is, and, I, yeah. and it's very important because if it's not addressed. I feel the union trades could get kicked out of the trades. There, people, the owners of these buildings are going to look for alternative labor. Yeah, and there's a lot of big non-union guys out there. Certainly is that have really good guys working for them. 
Yeah. That can get these jobs done for a lot less money. So as the general contractors now are writing their contracts, they literally put lean requirement sections in their oh. contracts. I oh. just read one here. Just actually, I was in a re contract review last week. Huh. And this is about the third or fourth one I've seen personally where there's actually, you know, where they're talking about your scope of work and your safety requirements, you know, your typical contract on a job that's 200 and something pages long these days. Yeah. There's a section for lean construction. And it's, it's basically states that, you know, your supervision and management will do these things. You mm -hmm. will provide last planner. You will do, um, you know, your weekly work plans. You will be doing stand-up meetings. You will be doing, you know, these lean, all the lean buzzwords, you know, that sure. you see these days, right? Yeah. It's in the contract. Wow. And so they can use that against you or, you know, you can obviously take it upon yourself and, and take those requirements, take a certain culture, put it out into the field and improve these guys so that, you know, these clients are going to go, man, these union carpenters and this company, KHSNS or whoever, mm -hmm. these are top notch people. Exactly. They've got some trained individuals that know how to do a job right and do it safe and on time. Mm -hmm. We're going to hire them again. Exactly. Right. If we don't, if we don't keep improving, mm -hmm. we're going to go nowhere. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's very interesting to hear that, that, that you're seeing that in contracts. You know where you have to you have to so now you got to hire like five people to manage that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> the, uh, or certain, su certain supervisors certainly think that i can't do it all yeah. and there's you know there is an added layer of uh expectation and responsibility to manage that sure and and that's where you know people like myself um and and greg for example you know we'll we certainly, we see those requirements and we're there to help, you know, mm -hmm. um, so they're not necessarily bombarded and buried with that type of stuff. Sure. Um, but oh, it's just, it's just another, another layer of uh, requirements, paperwork, meetings, gee, many Christmas meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Lots I mean, of them. there's in the eighties, maybe you went to what, maybe a foreman's meeting, maybe. Yeah. You know, exactly. now there's, we have superintendents now that are four and a half to five hours of meetings every day. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That is really amazing. And so do you have any family in the industry? I do not. Got it. I do not. You I said have, you have a son. I have a, I have a son who um, is, lives in Fort Collins, Colorado. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to be a grandpa in about three weeks. Oh, congrats. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 He's, What's he doing? He's in the computer industry. Got it. You know, went to school, got, um, Got his degree in computer science, um, got married, bought a condo all, all within about a year, moved to Fort Collins. Wow. And he's what, 23. Good for him. Yeah. And they're going to have a, you know, they're going to have a son here, you know, in October. Got it. Yeah. So I have, um, I literally have nobody in my family. I have five sisters got and it. none of them are in construction. That is so interesting, man. Yeah. It's, it's really and a my, trip. To and my dad was kind of an entrepreneur, restaurant mm -hmm. owner, mm -hmm. uh, you know, was in the Navy and, and came out and worked for the railroad. Never. Yeah. That is really a trip. Is the restaurant yeah. still going? Uh, it's no longer, it was called Cleary's family restaurant, La Habra. It's no longer, the building is still there and it's a restaurant, but, uh, you know, my parents sold that in the uh, late eighties. Mm -hmm. Got it. So um, that your sisters didn't want to take it over or anything like that? It is hard work. It is hard work. I don't know how my parents, my parents put the six of us through, you know, private education. I don't know how they did it. Back they worked in, their ass off. They did. I never, and they never had the fancy cars or the big houses, you know, the, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. He, um, that's tough. Yeah. That's tough. So yeah. you were, you were a Southern California native. You were born here. Yep. Born and raised in La Habra, mm -hmm. born in Long Beach. Um, yeah. Got it. Got and it. most of my family still lives in the general Orange County area. Mm -hmm. Got yeah. it. Well, you've had a hell of a career, man. And yeah. you have some good stories. It's, and, it's been and, great. You know, again, you know, I hope uh, these younger guys are tuning into this stuff and learning from this. I mean, this is this is how they can pick up some tricks and, and um, try to make their life easier. Yeah. You know, and uh, really appreciate you taking some time out of your day to come in here, Jeff. It's been great. Thank really you very much. It. This yeah, is it's a, a great. Uh, I think your podcasts are great. Thank and you.
Thanks. You're doing, a, you're doing a great service for the industry. Appreciate that. Thanks a lot, Jeff. You have a great day. You're welcome. You too, Rob. Right. Thanks.